Why shouldn't I, Cunningham? After all, I'm the railroad detective on this run. I don't like it, that's why. Suppose someone stuck his nose in here when we were in the middle of a poker game. Me and Williams might be upset. We might not be able to fix the cards properly. The railroad would sure have my hide if they knew I was working with you railroad gamblers. Huh? Does anyone suspect it? Relax, Cunningham, relax. Nobody's wise to a thing. I was just talking. Talking gets people in trouble, Henning. I don't like it. Okay, okay. Here's your partner. Williams? Yeah. I'm same as usual. Out in a club car with the other passengers. Can't have any of those suckers think Williams and I know each other. That's right. They figured you two for a pair of card sharps, you'd never get anybody to play cards with you. Have you gone through the train? That's what I came in to tell you. There's a couple guys in the club car look like good prospects. Pretty young and well-dressed. If you were in the club car, how is it you didn't see Williams? Maybe he had a newspaper up in front of his face. Don't be so suspicious, Cunningham. Why not? That's the only way I can be sure nothing goes wrong. This is a good racket, and I expect to keep it. That's okay by me, too. I get my cut, so it's to my interest to see nothing goes wrong. I'll go back in the club car and sit next to those two men. You know what to do. Maybe I ought to point them out to If you, you spotted them, it'll be easy for me. Just be sure we're supplied with the regular cards. Don't worry, they'll be marked all right. In the luxurious club car of the Limited, Cunningham sat down beside the two men described by the railroad detective. Unknown to Cunningham, one of these two men was Britt Reed, wealthy young publisher of the Daily Sentinel. Glad I ran into you, Reed. As long as we're on the same train, we can kill time together. Yeah, Stafford, for a while, anyway. Quite a while. Three hours till we get to the city. There's a little work I have to turn out before then. Work? Reed, I can remember when just hearing that word made you shudder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still don't take it too seriously. Still, someone has to look after the family interest since Dad went out west. Suit yourself. Oh, I wish there was some excitement on this train. How do you happen to be taking it anyhow? I thought you never left the bright light. I was upstate at the racetrack. Did pretty well, too. A man with your money can afford to lose plenty. <laughs> I guess that's why I usually win. Whatever it is, horses, bridge, poker... Oh, excuse me. Huh? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. If you're thinking of playing cards, don't do it on a train. <laughs> why not? Because you never know with whom you're playing. Take me, for instance. I make it a rule never to play cards with strangers. You're absolutely right about that. Oh, I don't know, Reed. I imagine I could be able to tell an honest man from a crook any time. Mm, perhaps you could. Well, by the way, let me introduce myself. My name's Cunningham. Glad to know you. I'm Stafford. And this is Brick Reed. Oh, a pleasure. Say, <laughs> caution or no caution, I wouldn't mind a friendly game of cards right now. <laughs> Your friend is hard to convince, Mr. Reed. <laughs> Excuse me for butting in. You gentlemen would like a fourth for bridge. How about me? Say, then we're all set. For well, just a moment. You or Reed know this man? Oh, what difference. I never saw him before, Cunningham. Oh, well, here's my card. I'm a stockbroker. My name's Williams. Glad to know you, Williams. How about that game, you two? Sorry, I have some favors to go over. Count me out. It's just as well. I'm not so keen on bridge. Oh, no offense, uh, Williams, of course, but, uh... Say, how about some poker, then? The three of us. Why, yes. Oh, I haven't much cash with me. Suppose I lose. Would you take my check? Absolutely not. No check. Oh, take it easy, Cunningham. We'll play for small stakes. If necessary, I don't mind cashing Williams' check. Oh, very well. We can play in my drawing room. Right. See you later, Reed. Uh, this way. Hmm. You look all right, and Stafford has plenty of money still. Oh, pardon me. May I speak to you for a moment? Me? Now, you're the railroad detective on this train, aren't you? As you know. I guess. You look like a detective. I know lots of passengers play cards, even though it's against the rules. Hey, you're not worried about your friend. Why, one of those men is Mr. Cunningham. He's traveled this line for years. Uh -huh. I was just curious. But I look in once in a while, just to be on the safe side. It really seems possible, but I wonder... Yeah, I'll have to talk to Stafford later. It may prove interesting. Hello, Miss Case. How things been going during my absence? I understand uh, Lowry's looking for me. Yes, he he's very mysterious about oh, it. That's not like Lowry. When he has something, he wants to tell the world about it in newspaper headlines. It was a byline. <laughs> <laughs> Let him come in. Anything else? That friend of yours, Mr. Stafford, is waiting. I told him to go into your private office. Stafford, huh? I missed him at the station. Oh, I wonder if my hunch was right. What hunch, Mr. Reed? Oh, never mind, Miss Kate. Uh, send for Lowry. Ah, Britt. 
I've been waiting for you. Oh, you look a bit disturbed, Stafford. Don't tell me you lost money playing poker with strangers. I lost plenty, Britt. I should have taken your advice and stayed away from those men. Uh, I thought as much. I swear that game is fixed, but there's no way of proving it. If only you'd been there watching. It takes an expert to detect crooked card tricks, Stafford. But I sent the railroad detective back there. He should have been able to tell. Some fellow did come in. Short, thick set. That's the one. Did he watch the game? Yes, he seemed to know Cunningham quite well. His name was Henning. So he was the detective, eh? Yes. He didn't notice anything out of the ordinary? Not a thing. <laughs> I guess if he couldn't find anything out of line, I was suspicious over nothing. Or else that detective is in with a crooked game. It's been known to happen. Hey, boss, am I glad you're back. I've got some inside dope that may build into a good yarn. Easy, Lowry. I have a visitor. Oh. oh but Casey said they'd come right in. Now, this is Mr. Stafford, a friend of mine, Lowry. Hello. Hiya. Well, don't hold it back, Lowry. What's this inside dope? Boss, I've picked up a lot of rumors around town about a big-time gambling ring operating on the railroads. On the railroads? Sure. Those trains are full of suckers waiting to be picked. Poor sass with more money than brains. <laughs> Whoa, Lowry. Hold on. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Well, it so happens, Laurie, that uh, I'm one of those poor suckers. Huh? That's right. Stafford got into a poker game on the train and lost plenty. Well, well that's great. What? Oh, well, that is, I, I don't mean about you getting hooked, Mr. Stafford, but if you've got proof about train gambling... Yeah, that's just the trouble. We have no proof, only suspicion. Oh. It takes more than that to get jail terms or a newspaper story. There must be plenty like Stafford here who ran up against this racket. Some of them must have proof. Yeah, I doubt it, Laurie. Besides, most of them are too ashamed to admit they've been victimized. That's true, Reed. Only reason I'm telling you is because you're my friend. I can't ever get around. I'd be laughed to death. Mm, looks like a story that didn't turn out. Perhaps we can find a story yet. One of those two men Stafford played with handed me a card to introduce himself. Those crooks carry fake cards by the dozen. Oh, we still don't know them for crooks, definitely, so this name and address may be on the level. Check on it anyway. Okay. If we find anything, we'll use it. And so will the police. <laughs> Several days later, in Britt Reed's apartment. Mr. Reed's resident. This is Lowry, Cato. Let me talk to the boss. One moment, please. Yeah, where is it, Cato? Mr. Lowry. Oh, yes. I told him to call me when he got through checking up on that name and address I gave him. What did you find, Lowry? Not a thing, boss. That's the guy's real name, and he has got a brokerage business. Did you talk to him? No. He's always out on trips, but it's on the level. It's quite possible that this brokerage office is merely a front to cover his real activities. If it is, uh... I'd like to know how we're going to find out. Uh, Miss Case told me you also phoned Henning, the railroad detective, but couldn't get anything from him. Oh, well, that's right. We drove blank every place. But I'll keep lugging. Yeah, do that, Lowry. Did Mr. Lowry find anything, Mr. Britt? I didn't hear. Apparently, everything is innocent on the surface, Cato. This man Williams does run a brokerage business. Lowry found that out. Then uh, he's not a clue? Well, he could still run the business as a blind to cover his gambling. According to Lowry, Williams is away most of the time. If my idea is right, he may be spending that time on the trains looking for victims like Stafford. Yes, sir. And if this railroad detective Henning knows Cunningham, the other man in that poker game, as well as he says he does, he may be in on it, too. How'd you find out, Mr. Bitt? I'm checking on that right now, Cato. Hello, Central Depot. Uh, I'd like to speak with one of your railroad detectives, a man named Henning. Oh, yes, sir. Eh? What train? Oh, no, no message. Thank you. He's not there? Henning's out on an assignment. He's leaving on the limit at 8.15. Cato, if those two fellows are card sharps and Henning is in with them, they're bound to pull their dirty work on the same train. Yes, sir, that's true. I'm going aboard that train to find out what I can. Are the Green Hornet, Mr. Well, not as the Green Hornet, Cato. That would be too risky. But I'll stay out of circulation as much as possible. Those two men, as well as Henning, have seen me before. Yes, sir. But I'll want the Green Hornet mask and gun handy in case they should be needed. Now, let me think. How can I do that without carrying them in my bag or someone might find them? Now, Cato, you have to take out the Black Beauty. The Hornet's car? Plenty fast enough to keep up with the Limited. Be sure the mask and the gun are in the car. And while you're driving, watch the observation platform. If I give the signal, you know I'll meet you at the next stop. Be sure to watch. That night, as the Limited sped through the darkness, Rick Reed stood in the rear of the observation platform. I've been through the whole train several times. No sign of Cunningham and Williams. Well, they must be in drawing room. They're bored at all. I'll take another turn in a few minutes. If I draw a blank then, I'll signal Cato. But before Britt Reed could carry on his search, drama occurred aboard the Limited. In a drawing room toward the front of the train, Cunningham and Williams called Henning. 
What's up, Cunningham? What's up? The... Who's this guy lying on the floor? That's allowed, Henny. Williams and I were playing poker with him. He saw Williams slip a card out of his sleeve. He started to squawk and I hit him. He looks as if he, he might... He hit the corner of the table. We must get him out of here, off this train. I've already emptied his pockets. I put the ticket for this drawing room in his coat. He can't open that window, Cunningham. In these air-conditioned cars, the windows are sealed. You can break glass. I lift him out. The train's going 80 miles an hour. He can't leave him here. When he comes to, he talk. This racket's too good to spoil. No one knows we took this drawing room, Henning. Only you. And you know better than to say anything. You will sneak off the train to the next station. No one the wiser. Now, get his feet. Hey, Sammy. Step yeah. it up. We're passing close to the state highway. Lights up the side of the tracks like a Roman candle. <clears throat> there he goes. Yeah. And no one the wiser. Now all we got to do is... <laughs> what the... The brakes. Somebody pull the air brakes. That means they part of the man we tossed out. Come on. Grab those bags. We're getting off this train before anyone starts a real checkup. The car door's open. Beat it, Cunningham. Come on, Williams. Stuck under the coupling. Over the other side. Henry, what happened? Who pulled the emergency cord? Search me. Has there been an accident? You almost knocked me out of my berth. That engineer ought to be fired, stopping like that. I pulled that emergency cord. You? Don't you realize that's a criminal offense? I do, Conductor, but it was necessary. I was standing on the emergency platform and I saw a body fall off the train. Huh? Why, man, you, you must be crazy. That young man's telling the truth. I saw it, too. Oh, it was horrible. Calm yourself, lady. How can I calm myself after that? And that's not all I saw. Now, look, madam. What else did you see? I, uh, I was looking out the window. We were passing right close to the state road. And just before that, that body fell, I saw a long black car beside the train. And the man driving it wore a mask. I could see him clearly. He was so close. A black car and a man in a mask. Why, that... That must be the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? Are you sure you're not dreaming, madam? Well, of course I'm sure. The Green Hornet. You mean he might have had something to do with that body that fell from the train? Oh, I talk about that. Let's find the passenger who fell first. I'm sure he'll be dead when we find him. I'm sure of it. And the Green Hornet is the one who did it. This is Theater of the Mind on 104.5 Chum FM. We'll conclude tonight's episode of The Green Hornets right after this. It's really fun getting dressed up for a night on the town, right? It's so enjoyable. The night includes a special routine just to get ready. Start with a long, steaming shower. Spend more time on your makeup. Slip into an outfit that's going to knock them dead. And just one more look in the mirror. Perfect. You're dressed to the nines. That all changes when you've been drinking and you get behind the wheel of a car. Then, you're dressed to kill. Please, don't drink and drive. Lemonade for sale, five cents. Hey, mystery, want some lemonade? This is quite the business you have here. Aw, oh, it's just a start. One day I'm going to be an interpreter. <laughs> you mean an entrepreneur? Yeah, like my mom. She just opened a small business with a loan from New Ventures. New Ventures. That's the program where you can get an interest rate of prime plus 1% because the Ontario government guarantees your loan. Up to $15,000 if you qualify. How come you know about it? I just opened a franchise myself. Did you get a loan from New Ventures? Couldn't have managed otherwise. Mister, did you have a lemonade stand when you were a kid? Had one every summer for five years. Want to buy a share in my company? Give your small business a bigger chance of success. Find out about a New Ventures loan today. For more information, talk to your loan officer or call the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Technology toll-free hotline at 1-800-387-6142. Or check this Thursday's Toronto Star for our ad. New Ventures Loans, a smart move for small business. Now to continue our story. A friend of Britt Reed lost a lot of money to railroad card shops, but nothing could be proved since the gamblers were very clever in their operations. Going aboard the Limited himself in an attempt to corner the card shops through a chain of circumstances, the Green Hornet is accused of murder. Yes? Oh, any news? Oh, the police expect to identify the man who fell off the train. Well, they've been expecting to identify him ever since it happened last night. 
Well, keep after them. We want to know. Wasn't that some story last night, J.C.? Do you really think it was the Green Hornet, Lowry? Well, that woman claimed she saw his car just before that guy fell. But why are they calling it murder? Well, suppose the man jumped off the train. Wouldn't the fall be enough to kill him? Well, maybe, Casey. But murder makes a better story. What I want to know is, who was that guy? His pockets were empty, except for that ticket to drawing room A, car 92. Well, that's where he fell from, all right. The window was busted out. Hello, Miss Case. Lowry, any identification yet? No, Mr. Reed. I'll call police headquarters again. Some yarn, huh, boss? I wonder who covered it for the sentence. Get me police headquarters. We scooped the other papers on it by an hour. Where were you? Last night, uh, I was home in bed. First I heard about it was when I came in this noon. I phoned that story in. Huh? I was on that train when it happened. Holy oh, cat, then you saw the Green Hornet. Was that woman's yarn on the level? No, no, no way. The Green Hornet's car was driving along beside the Limited. I saw it, but I don't believe the Green Hornet was directly involved. Uh, you and Casey both. Why else would that car be there? Hello? Police headquarters? I want yeah, to I'll take it, Miss Case. Britt Reed talking. Any identification on that man who fell off the Limited? Well, you have, huh? Hello? Are you positive? There's no mistake. Oh, we'll print it all right. Who was it, Mr. Reed? That man was Morelli. Morelli? The big shot gambler from upstate? Well... Lowry, keep after that fellow Williams. I'm not sure, but it seems more than coincidence that gambling is the keynote of everything connected with this death. Williams? Was he on that train, boss? I didn't see him, but he might have been. And a man like Morelli doesn't commit suicide. Someone pushed him through that window. And I don't think it was the Green Hornet. That evening, Brett Reed arrived at his apartment carrying a small parcel under his arm. There he spoke to Cato, his valet, and the only living man to know him as the Green Hornet. And that man has been identified as my rally, the gambler, Cato. Very bad last night, Mr. Brett. Well, it's a good thing that woman saw you driving the Black Beauty beside the railroad tracks. The man who threw my rally off the limit will be expecting a call from the Green Hornet. And they won't be disappointed. Open that parcel. Yes, sir. Luckily, I was able to flash you a danger signal from the train last night so that you turned the Black Beauty around and got away. Yes, sir. Very fortunate. What? Mr. Briff, you buy a toy? Careful how you handle that, Cato. I don't want our fingerprints to get on it. Uh, I don't understand. I bought this little toy railroad car on the way home. Notice how well it's built. Glass windows, everything. Uh, hand me that metal ashtray. A yeah, small one on the table. Yes, sir. I had a special reason for getting this toy car, Cato. No one saw me get it. I sent a small boy into the toy shop while I stayed outside. What are you doing, Mr. Britt? Breaking one of the windows in this little toy? <clears throat> are the mask and the gun still in the Black Beauty, Cato? Yes, Mr. Britt. The police are on the lookout for the Green Hornet, so we'll have to be especially careful tonight. Bring the toy railroad car along. No fingerprints. Picking up the toy, Cato followed Britt Reed through the secret panel behind a clothes press in the apartment. Then along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the building, and down a flight of stairs that led directly to the supposedly abandoned warehouse that housed the car of the Green Hornet. I'll drive. Put the toy car where it'll be handy when I want it. Yes, Mr. Bill. Careful. Wipe it off with your handkerchief. Yes, sir. There are three men involved in Morelli's death. All three of them are going to meet the Green Hornet. <laughs> detectives are working to solve the death of gambler Morelli, who fell or was thrown off the limited last night. By checking over the tickets issued to the passengers, authorities have learned that two tickets were issued and are still unaccounted for. It is believed that the passengers radio walk those tickets screwing. may be involved. Every effort is being made to... What's the matter with you, Henning? Morelli, that's one. Take it easy, Henning. Nobody knows it was us. Why did you two guys pick him for a sucker out of all the people that was riding the train? He didn't tell us his name. We thought he was just another amateur looking for a hand up poker. No wonder Morelli saw you pawn that card, Williams. He's an expert. All the more reason for taking care of him. Yeah, sure. We had a good record on those trains. Morelli must have been trying to cut in on us. That don't mean you had a handle on that way. What'd you expect us to do? Use kid gloves? It wasn't time to figure things out. We worked fast because we had to. I'm supposed to be out right now looking for the guys who pulled this job. And all the time I'm wise to the whole setup. You're in as deep as we are. I didn't do no killing. You were there when we dumped Morelli overboard. What does that prove? That makes you an accomplice after the fact, Henning. As a detective, we don't have to explain that any further. 
So just remember, it's to your best interest to make every effort to keep us from being caught. What do you think I'm doing? So far, yes. But don't change. If it only hadn't been Morelli. Well, it was Morelli. Stop harping on it. We didn't realize it until we got back here and took a look in his wallet. Where's his stuff now? It's safe. I have it locked up along with our marked cards. We'll get rid of them all at the same time. What's the idea of waiting? You should have ditched that stuff long ago. We had our hands full making sure nobody spotted us when we sneaked away from that train last we night. We came straight here. If we tried to get rid of those things on the way, someone might have remembered us. All right, why don't you burn them? Because leather won't burn, you fool. Morella's initials are on that wallet. Hold on. What? What's the matter? I thought I heard a sound from the next room. I don't hear anything. It's your imagination, Henning. No, I tell you. It was like somebody went in a clock or something. Pipe dreams. Yeah? What was that? He's right, Cunningham. That was a window. We'll soon find out. See, Henning? The room's empty. There's no one here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you... What's that on the floor? It's moving. Put on the lights. What the... It's a little toy. A mechanical toy. But how'd they get here? But it's a toy railroad car. Look, one of the windows knocked out. Somebody was all about last night. Here's a piece of paper. Rolled into one end of the car. Oh, look at it. If this is a cute little joke one of you is pulling, putting this toy car here and... Look! This paper's stamped with a seal. The seal of the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? I knew there was someone here. I heard him. But how do you know it was us? That car of his. It was alongside the train last night. That's the answer. He must have seen what happened. And he saw because the cops are looking for him instead of us. Hold it. What I want to know is what's he going to do? Shut up, Henning. You have an idea, Cunningham? The Hornet can't tell the police about us. They'd never believe him. Besides, if he's after money, he can't get any unless he finds Morelli's wallet and uses that against us. Well, the wallet's here. It won't be long. Here's all the evidence. Henning, you're going to take it out and get rid of it. Dump it in the river, any place. If that Green Hornet comes back, I don't want it around. After leaving the toy car in Cunningham's apartment that we'd left by the fire escape, he and Cato waited below. I overheard their conversation before I left, Cato. Morelli's wallet was still there, hidden away. Yes, sir. I won't dare keep it around not after they got my warning. And whoever comes out to get rid of that evidence... Keep back in the shadows. Someone's coming. Just like coming here, making me do all the dirty work. Got to get rid of these things. Don't before. move, Henning. The green horn. I want what you're carrying. You won't get it. Let me buy it. I can't. Up in the lights. You don't dare follow me. Yes, you... Yes, me. I can't breathe. I call the police now. Get them over here when Henning comes to. You watch him. I'll be back in a minute. Leaving Cato to guard the unconscious railroad detective, Britt Reed put the Green Hornet mask and weapon in his pocket and headed for the nearest phone. He called police headquarters, and when they answered... I want to speak to the officer in charge of the Morelli investigation. He ain't here. He's out with a reporter named Lowry. They got a lead on some guy named William. They call him up. Tell him to forget about William's place. There's no one there. Who's this caller? Never mind. Take this tip and use it. Tell him to get over to 1724 East 51st. A man named Cunningham. Don't forget, if he wants to solve the Morelli job, 1724 East 51st. Hurriedly, Britt Reed returned to Cato. He replaced his green hornet mask. The police will be here very soon, Cato. Take that bag with the evidence. I'll carry Henning. What are we doing, Mr. We're returning Henning and the evidence to the place they came from. <laughs> Cunningham, are you sure we can trust Henning? He knows better than to cross us. And why isn't he back here? He's had plenty of time to ditch that stuff. It must be Henning now. Henning! Well, he's been gassed. Somebody propped him against the door. The Green Hornet. Whoever it was, there's no time for talk. Pull him inside. <clears throat> he's coming around. Close the door fast. Okay, uh, Cunningham, the bag with all that stuff, that's here too. What happened? I... Uh, how about Henning? Come on. Don't let him get away. The Green Hornet, he gassed me, took the bag. Took it nothing. It was outside the door. He brought it back. Get it out of here, Williams. Hurry. And see if this Green Hornet doesn't get you the way he did Henning. Okay. It's him. He's back. Oh, the Hornet, huh? Don't move any of you. The police. I'll take this guy. Let me go. Resisting an officer. Uh, you won't get me. What's funny, Henning? Go for the desk drawer. Put down that gun. I'll get you before I do. Robert. Oh, my arm. My arm. Let go. Are you going to drop that gun? Oh. Nice work, Hardy. I've got the gun now. You, you'll pay for this police or no police. Sure, you can't come busting in on private citizens. Who are you? 
I know these two. They were described to me, but I never saw you before. Where's your search warrant? I recognize him, Lowry. He's Henning, a railroad cop. That's how he knows about warrants. Come on, talk. What do you know about Morelli? Never heard of him. And I suppose Henning never heard of him either. Did you, Henning? Hey, what are you reaching after that bag for? Uh, no reason. Nothing at all. Give me that. I'll dump this stuff on the table. Playing cards and dice. So you guys are gamblers. Here's a wallet. Let me look at the name on it. Morelli's wallet. We don't know a thing about that stuff. It's not ours. We'll see about that when the fingerprints are checked. Looks like you two are going to get what's coming to you. I don't know a thing How about, about Henning. Where does he fit in? Me? Why, why, it's this way. I was on a trail of these crooks, too. I came up here to Neb, and he almost got me before you came. You'll need a better story than that, Henning. I'm innocent, I tell you. that, that rat. He was in with us. You yellow squealer. Don't believe him. He's as guilty as we are. Listen, buddy. I'll talk. I'll turn state's evidence. It wasn't me. I knew about it, but, but they're the ones. They killed Morelli. It was that green hornet. If it hadn't been for him, we'd never have been caught. If I ever get my hands on him, I'll... Listen, Cunningham. Trying to grab that guy is like trying to grab a handful of air. Nobody ever got the green hornet yet and take it from me. Nobody ever will. <laughs>